In this video, we'll discuss automatic nesting and a few part properties related to nesting. So automatic nesting is available with the Essentials or Unlimited tiers of ProNest LT. It lets you automatically nest all the parts in the part list. Let's take a look at how to use it. So on the Home tab, there's an automatic nesting group. This includes things like the strategy and plate size you're going to use. Click the Auto Nest button. And you can see there's two options here, yellow or green. The yellow button opens a setup dialog where you can make changes to settings prior to nesting. The green button will simply go ahead and begin automatic nesting right away. So let's select the yellow one. And here's the auto nest setup dialog. Up at the top, you can pick a strategy. So the strategies in ProNest LT are different algorithms that you can use for nesting. The strategy you select will be based on the sizes and shapes of the parts that you're nesting. There are two basic types of strategy, rectangular and true shape. First, let's take a look at the two rectangular options. So rectangular and rectangular optimization. With these, Pronest draws a rectangular box around the parts. And then it nests those rectangles. So this is a good fast option for rectangular shaped parts. However, it may not work well for parts with different shapes and contours. Next, strategies one through five are called true shape strategies. These nest parts together based on their shape. So the shape of the interior and exterior profiles. Generally speaking, these strategies are numbered in terms of their thoroughness. So strategy one is a bit faster, but tries fewer orientations on the nest. Whereas strategy five is more complex. It tries the largest number of different part rotations and combinations on the nest, but it's also a bit slower. With that in mind, each strategy can give you a different result. So depending on your part set, some strategies will give you better results than others. So ultimately, you should just pick a strategy that makes sense for the parts that you're trying to nest. My part list contains a lot of parts with different sizes and shapes, so I'm going to pick a true shape strategy. Let's go with strategy 5. There are a few other options in this dialog as well. Um, you can select only create new nests to nest on new plates only, or you can choose to only nest on existing nests. You can also set your plate size here. So the size you pick here will be used for all the nests that are created during this run of auto nest. You can also set a quantity for your plates. So if you only have 10 plates in inventory, um, you could just set this to 10 and ProNest will only create 10 nests during auto nesting. All right, just click OK to begin auto nesting. Okay, and nesting is now complete. So I have five nests in my job, and I can review these by just clicking this arrow here. As you review the nest in your job, if you're not satisfied with the result that you have from automatic nesting, you can always delete your nest and try again with a different strategy. So automatic nesting sometimes requires a little bit of trial and error. So let's look through these nests here. All right, so this last nest has a lot of empty space on it, and it may be that these parts would fit um, on the first four nests. Okay, so we can just delete all nests here. Okay, now let's try it with a different strategy. So I'll open the setup dialog. This time I'll pick strategy one. That's still a true shape strategy. And just click OK. Okay, my nests are being created. And this time, strategy one gave me a better result. So now I was able to place all of the parts on four nests as opposed to five. So this gives me a lot better utilization. So again, with auto nesting, sometimes it's a matter of trial and error, just trying out different strategies, comparing the results, and then picking the one with the best result. Next, 
Let's discuss nesting order and a few part properties that relate to nesting. So this may be an obvious point, but automatic nesting will always try to nest all of the quantities of any part in the part list. The order in which parts are nested is generally based on part size, so larger parts are normally nested before smaller parts. The nesting order is shown by default in the part list, so parts at the top will be nested before parts at the bottom. So I have this large base plate part here up at the top, and that's why this was placed on the first nest. Okay, so that was nested first. However, in ProNest, there's a property which lets you control nesting order. This is called priority. So priority is a part property. It's a number that can be set for any part, and the number controls the order in which parts are automatically nested. So a part with a priority of 1 would be nested before a part with a priority of 2 or 3. So if you have a part that's important and needs to be nested first, you can use priority for this. Let's say I select this blade part, and I'll set the priority now to 1. That now has the top priority, and you can see that it's jumped to the top of the part list. Now, if we were to rerun automatic nesting, that blade part would be nested first, before any other parts. One other note about priority, the number 99 is reserved for filler parts. These are parts that are generally useful and can be nested on any nest, as long as they don't prevent other parts from being nested. This might be a part that you cut all the time and you only want to add it to a plate if there's enough room after other parts have been nested. So let's say I set the priority for this rectangle to be 99. Okay, if I were to rerun automatic nesting, that part would only be nested after all of the other parts have been placed. Another nesting related property is called prohibit filling. So this is different from priority and filler parts that we just discussed. Prohibit filling is a part property that you can use if you don't want parts nested inside the interiors of other parts. So let's take a look at a part on this nest. So this part here, you can select this, has a smaller part nested inside of it. Okay, now let's turn on prohibit filling for that part. So we'll find it in the part list. And I'll turn on prohibit filling. You can see now there's cross hatching drawn on the part's interior. If we were to automatically nest again, no parts would be nested inside this part. Okay, so once I place that part, it now shows up in conflict, and this is because it has a smaller part nested inside of it. 